Hello everybody, that is here, very happy to see all of you on the other side of the screen. Today we have a very interesting and potentially challenging project which originated back in January when I was visiting Consumer Electronics Show and visiting Beats Power booth with all the new water cooling products they're showcasing back then. I noticed very interesting water block called Summit River, which was created with cooperation and original idea from the modder called Modding Cafe. I'm not familiar with this uh, individual, but he, he did a good job for creating this uh, unusual type of the water block when we have a connection through the PCB with all ports on the back. So today we'll try to install it. And during discussion with Bitspower on getting example of this block and build something out of it or make tutorial out of it they also suggested to connect me with the msi who was kind enough to also provide their own in a similar lane called the project zero motherboard and this product also have a similar situation with all electrical connections on the, on the back so we will have opportunity to try to install to see how difficult it is and how it works in general quick look at the MSI motherboard and what advantages and challenges it brings this is a standard micro ATX motherboard for Intel LJ1700 if you want it's also available for AMD and the model specifically B760M available at any computer store in Canada or Amazon at $300. So it's not a very expensive motherboard, but it features quite interesting thing. Besides the standard DDR5 Gen5 PCI for your GPU, Gen4 for your SSD, the main interesting thing about this motherboard with all electrical and data connections on the back of the motherboard. So power for CPU and motherboard, power for all your fans, everything on the back, data, SATA, USB, your connection for your RGB and things like this. This all on the back. So this is allows you to make very clean type of the installation almost without any power cables with the exception of the GPU which has its own power connection and so when you install GPU you still have one cable on the front but everything else can be hidden. This type of connections create additional problem not a problem but a twist that because you have all the stuff sticking out on the back of the motherboard you cannot use most of the existing cases on the market and you need to look into the case which has a cutouts for all these additional connectors. Also based on few reviews that I look on the internet it's also important that when you finish your computer with all the wiring you actually need to be mindful of leaving all those connections free clutter of the cables because if you later you want to access anything you don't want to dig through the maze of the cables that abstract your connection to the whatever port you're looking to access to so thank you msi for providing this motherboard we really appreciate it it's very tricky type of installation you'll see it later and the fact that we have a motherboard that that we can use for this project it's really nice let's look at the block itself i start with the back portion of it so we have this section which is essentially on the back of your motherboard with liquid coming through the board through those four connections in a parallel way and you have your standard connection for the tubing in this uh, sort of a terminal I would call it and we have a required hardware for this particular type of connection as you can see the size of the tubing that goes through the motherboard is quite small but the fact that it's four of those hopefully it will be enough flow to provide adequate cooling and if we look on the block itself the block which will look more traditionally as you expected it has this decorative magnetic cover but this is what we typically we, we can see I expect from the water block with additional bracket that retain everything on the front motherboard with the screws. So what we need to do to make a preparation to the motherboard itself, which is a little bit tricky. 
and I really happy that I have a sponsored motherboard from MSI here. So essentially we need to remove LJ bracket because it will be replaced by the bracket provided by Beats Power. On the process we should not kill the socket itself, don't bend anything, which will be a little bit tricky. Alright, step one, removing the socket. In the manual bit power suggesting put CPU right into the socket and uh, protect it. Okay. Now we can put motherboard aside for a second and we need to prepare this back plate and screws. Manual is uh, no explanation, only only pictures. So it requires a little bit of looking up what we're doing here. Luckily we have some numbers describing which part is what. So we need bracket 7, bolts 8, and sticky film 9, and assemble it all together. Basically, I need to align all the holes correctly. Alright, so we get, what we got here is a result that this plastic sticky film holding screws in place for us. And what's happening next? We're having this back plate that goes on the back of the motherboard. this part going on top as a retention and we need the four screws which not marked in the manual by any number but this is only one option right here Kind of already seeing that those holes misalign with the motherboard. Yeah, probably need to flip bottom part. That's most likely because it's quite clear sign here. It doesn't say anything, but on the picture, those ports facing down, which I didn't follow. So now let's see if alignment will improve. I'll be damned. Yeah, somehow it made a difference. It's crazy. So when you install it, installed plugs need to face down. If you face up, 
I'm not saying a lion. Not a word about it in the manual. But that's what it is. Next part. Okay, we have a those nuts and screws assemblies that goes here. And we have those weird things for water pass that get screwed on the bottom. Oh. Again, not a word in the manual, but I'm thinking I saw I saw those o rings and uh, and I think it's make hundred percent sense that you have o rings here. Otherwise, it has to be leaking. Okay. So I have this stuff. I think Beats Power putting a lot of trust in the computer models without explaining or omitting important part in the installation process. everything together and tighten it together. Naturally you need to apply thermal paste on the CPU to do so. Remove the film and then you golden. Oh finally You also need to look that screws and post align properly. So I think now it's actually now it's in place. Actually in order to latch those screws. Oh and block settled. A little bit further. Doesn't look too bad. Have this. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
it does hold pressure, no problem. Good. Just to make sure. Alrighty, that's how this whole thing looks. Relatively standard looking CPU block. But no ports, nothing. So everything will be handled through the back side of um, this motherboard. So we either use those connections or those connections. Or if you have enough space, in a case, those connections can be used as well. Which probably makes sense because otherwise you need to go around one or other. Maybe those not the best because this will be interacting with ports. So those more likely candidates. That's all we have for today. I also have a special case that fits this motherboard. So we will probably will continue with additional video to see how this can be installed and routed for the tubing on the practice. But for installation, basically not very straightforward process. We did a few mistakes. But if you're watching this video before you're doing your own, you definitely can avoid all of those. Thank you for watching and see you soon.